This is Twit. Even though there isn't a convergence of all the platforms, one line in that speech kind of was a big eye-opener when they said, and oh, by the way, your iOS apps should run without modification on an, an well, Apple Did you Silicon watch State of device. the Union, Leo? Did you yeah. watch the State of the Union afterwards? We streamed afterwards? both, when they yeah. showed. When they showed read all documents, yes. and they're like, if you've made a good iPad app, by the way, you get resizing, you get multiple yes. windows, you get yeah. you yes. dark mode. And I was like, wow. Okay. I have to say the and one an thing. extra bit, you get Catalyst. You know, the like, one wow. thing I installed was uh, uh, Xcode 12. <laughs> I am very, I'm very judicious, but I did install that because I really, uh, you know, Swift UI is very interesting. I wanted to play yeah. with it and I did really, I'm starting to think. I'm not a fan of uh, uh, hardware-dependent development. I, when I write code, I like to write it so it runs everywhere, uh, which means I don't do GUIs most of the time. And if I do, they're crap because you can't do cross-platform GUIs very well. But I like the coding part. I like the solving problems part. I don't. But I have to say, if you could write an app that would run on an iPhone, an iPad, and a Mac, yeah, you've got a really interesting market there for you. It's it's also raises a lot of questions about what Apple sees the Mac being or the platform being in the next five years. That that really did take me by surprise. It's technically we would have all guessed that that was feasible, but the idea of blurring that line for consumers about saying that uh, there is there is now no longer necessarily a hard divider between iOS apps and Mac apps. If you if there's a app you like on your phone and you think it runs it just by all by all means install it on your Mac, it'll be good. It'll be the exact same experience. But that that last bit always kind of gets me worried because it shouldn't be the same kind of experience. It should you should be losing something by going from a the a the device that this was specifically targeted to to something that it was not specifically targeted to. And by that I mean that there should some things that shouldn't if if it's just as elegant on a Mac as it is on a multi-touch device, then that multi-touch interface that the, you've come up with isn't that good. Similarly, if you've put it if you copy it onto a Mac and you don't really notice that you're missing anything that you would from a competing desktop app, then that's some extra overhead that you're not really using. That's an extra advantage you're not using. And that and I, and I admit that this could be just as much an, uh, an admission that Apple and its developers are doing genius work creating very full-featured apps that work no matter what context they're in. But as someone who's who still has the keychain tool for taking it for for uh, for unhooking an Apple Disk Two drive from app from an Apple Two E, <laughs> it does, it's the sort of thing I naturally sort of worry about. So it'll be this is going to be a fun next couple of years to watch for sure. Uh I don't. I don't even know where to begin. I, I guess that's a good as good place to start as any. Is what is the, what is the future of the platform, the whole th kit and the Google, ecosystem? Yeah, the ecosystem. Yeah. So, what, I mean, one my of the things I, they were I, so worried. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, for a long time, people have been worried, and rightly so, that the Mac is going to become iOS. And I think when people say that, they talk about it, they, they think about it in terms of an open computing environment, a platform where it, most recently it ran Unix you know, under the seams. It had a beautiful GUI on top, and you could boot camp into Windows and do all your web development and all these things. And it worked like everyone who grew up with a traditional computer assumed it to work. And they saw iOS as sort of this lockdown gatekeeper, not even gatekeeper, lockdown, restricted, only App Store environment. But I think where Apple has been going is that once the technology stack is the same, you know, they can they can open or close different valves. But once the the uh, the interface, the conventions are similar for people who aren't sophisticated, there's no distinction. The plumbing is irrelevant to them. They just know they have a mail app and a mail app and a Safari and a Safari and the things look the same and behave the same. And we're never getting an Instagram app for the Mac. But look, I can just launch the iPhone <laughs> version and it for them for this vast majority of consumers, 80, 90 percent who aren't the really loud ones on Twitter, you know, they for them, it, it just it makes the, the Mac a much more accessible computing platform for them.